Hello everyone, I'm Charles Clark from Exploring Quantum Physics and today I'm going to show you examples of projective quantum measurements using some objects with which you're probably familiar. This is an ordinary flat panel display, maybe similar to the one on which you're viewing this video. And then I have here a set of 3D movie viewing eyeglasses. These glasses, as you see here, pass the light with a little bit of attenuation from the display but when I change the orientation, one of the lenses is blocked and the other remains transparent. Uh, I, I have another pair of such glasses mounted in a fixed position here, which we'll, we'll use a bit later. And what's going on is the, the light from the display is polarized, and so with one orientation, uh, this lens blocks the transmission of light. It stops it, and this one passes it, and then 90 degrees away, the other polarization is passed. And this is used in the 3D movies because they have a system of broadcasting two optical signals of different polarization and they're displaced on the screen so you get the uh, illusion of uh, three-dimensional vision. Now when this light is blocked, if I take an you know, ordinary well-prepared transparent material and put it uh, in between the display and the, the eyeglass, then you see things occur as you would expect. But if I take some other more complicated but transparent object like this espresso cup, then you can see putting it in front of the, the blocking lens actually allows a lot of the light to pass. In fact, if I take, even if I take another polarizer, you can see that putting this other polarizer, which may even be the opposite polarizer to the one that's in use, allows a lot of the light to pass. And this is because when light passes through a polarizer, it takes on exactly the polarization of the pass axis. And so changes in the polarization here allow uh, light to, to escape through. And this is the principle of projective quantum measurements, which say that when you make a measurement on a state, you actually are creating that state in the measurement basis that you used. So this is the basis of quantum cryptography. It will be subject of a later lecture. I hope to see you in class.